Hi friends, my name is Harsha. In this video, we will be dealing with the assembly and working principles of the project we have undertaken vertical axis wind turbine with dual rotor axial flux generator. We have undertaken this project at Center of Excellence for Renewable Energy and Sustainable Technology, Department of Tripoli, Pardaman College of Engineering. Now, we will have a look on the calculations based on which the impeller is designed. Let us calculate the swept area from the following mechanical parameters. From the relation power equal to half rho AV cube Cp, where rho stands for density of air, A stands for the swept area, V stands for the wind speed, and Cp is an efficiency parameter. We are designing a 250 watt wind turbine, so the power comes out to be 250. Putting the density to be 1.225 and considering the wind speed to be 10 meter per second, for an efficiency of 0.4, we get the swept area as 1.02 meter square. Based on this following data, we have chosen the dimensions of our blades. Taking the aerodynamic factors into account, this blade shape has been designed and manufactured by using a 250 ton hydraulic press. To this blade, three steel strips are attached, one at the top, at the middle and the third one at the bottom. To this middle strip, a metriangular support is welded so that this can be attached to remaining part of the turbine. The pentagonal structure is made up of 5 mm thick steel sheet which is obtained by laser cutting. To this pentagonal structure, two such metal spokes of the same material but 3 mm in thickness are attached on one end and the other end is fastened to the blade. This pentagon is attached to the flange bearing which is self-aligning in nature and is in turn attached to the central shaft. Now let us see the calculations which form the basis of our straight art design. As our generator consists of two rotors, we are implementing 18 poles per rotor. This is from the relation that speed equal to 120F by P which means as the number of poles are increasing the speed decreases which is optimum for a wind turbine. For a three-phase supply of 18 poles, 27 coils are required. This is also from the fact that if one of the phases in a three-phase supply is at its maximum position, the other two phases are equal in magnitude and half of it in the negative axis. So, 27 coils are required for the entire generator, which means 27 by 3, which gives us 9 coils for a single phase. Let us calculate the number of turns for a single coil. From the relation E equal to 4.44 F5T, we are assuming Kc and Kd, that is pitch and distribution factors to be unity. In this relation, F stands for frequency, 5 stands for the flux per pole and T stands for the number of turns. We get E by T, EMF induced per turn to be around 4.44 into F into 5. As we are doing these calculations for a standard frequency of 50 Hz, the flux of our magnets is about 1.28 millivibers. We are arranging the rotors in such a position that the flux of the two magnets gets added up which results in a total flux of 2.56 millivibers. Therefore, putting these values in the equation, we get EMF induced per turn to be 0.568 volts. So, for getting a 230 volt output, the number of turns required per phase will be 404.71. As we know that there are a total of 27 coils and 9 coils for a single phase, therefore 404.71 divided by 9, which gives us 44.96 coins for a single coil for a single phase. We are assuming the tolerance value to be plus or minus 5% and rounding it off to 50 turns for a single coil. This is a 3 phase 18 pole. 0.7 kVA, 415 volt, 50 hertz, dual rotor axial flux alternator. As the direction of flux is along the direction of axis of the shaft, it is called an axial flux generator. So now let's move on and see the construction of the stator. As per our connection, the stator consists of 9 coils per phase and all the coils of a phase are connected in series by soldering them and additionally insulating them with insulating sleeves. Let's have a look on how these coils are made. The machine which you are seeing here is a winding machine which we are using to wind the straight arc coil. 
The copper wire which we are using here is of 20 SWG. This is a former which we have designed as per our requirement. So let's start the winding. We have made all the necessary arrangements required for the winding. As you can see, a counter is provided here which makes our work easy. So let's continue the winding. After completing the winding, this is how the stator coil looks. We have taped it together as it would bind all the conductors. Thus, these 27 coils are sandwiched between two bakelite sheets and form the stator of our generator. This is the output we have obtained for a single phase by performing a sample test using only 4 ferrite poles on each rotor. Till now, we have discussed the various components used in this turbine unit. So, it's time to move on to the assembly. Time has now arrived to assemble the components. So, let's start. As discussed earlier, this flange bearing fits right into the pentagonal structure which goes into the bush of the temporary stand. Now, this shaft will be put into the hole of the stand. Two such spokes are attached to the pentagon, one at the top and other at the bottom to provide extra stability. The triangular part of the blade is fastened between these two pair of spokes. This is how the first section of the impeller looks like after the assembly. As you can see, the horizontal spokes are drooped due to its long length. So, in order to eliminate this problem, we are using the eye hooks, which will be connected to the upcoming impellers and form an interbalance structure. We have seen the individual components and assembly of this model. Now, let's see its working. Its working is based on the principle of electromechanical energy conversion, that is, the energy in the wind is transformed into mechanical energy by the turbine. The blades capture the energy from the air and convert it into mechanical energy. As the generator is coupled to the pentagon, the mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy with the help of the generator. I conclude this video by thanking our parents, faculty and the sergeant team for giving us this opportunity. We also thank each and every one of you for spending your valuable time with us in this video. Jai Hind!